Hey everybody, thank you for visiting the channel and welcome to my channel, Past, Present, and Future Gnosis. Your host, it's Gnosis here, and I have a very interesting story for you guys today. And if you've been watching my channel and been watching my videos, I keep telling you all, this world is bigger than any of us really know. And what actually comes to mind to actually validate what I've been saying on my multiple videos is we have this article here straight out of CNN. So without further ado, let's get into it. And this is no clickbait, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what you're seeing in the headlines is true. Yes, Japan just found 7,000 islands. It didn't know it had now. This may be confusing to you because trust me, it was to me when I first read this article. But anywho, let's get straight into this article and see what it has to suffice because very interesting. So CNN, Japan has recounted its islands and discovered it has 7,000 more than it previously thought. Digital mapping by the Geospira Informational Authority of Japan, the GSI, recently found that there to be 14,125 islands in Japan's territory, more than double the figure of 6,852 that has been in official use since 1987 reported by japan's coast guard so not even the amount that they just found but they're saying that it's doubled since 1987 now, that's weird like how are you now being able to count all of this and accommodate for all your territories but i'll continue however the gsi this week stressed that the new figure reflected advances in surveying technology and the detail of the maps used for the count. It did not change the overall era of land in Japan's possession. A little confusing, but as I continue, you'll see a little bit more. It said that while there is no international agreement on how to count islands, it has used the same size cri criteria as a previous survey 35 years ago. So it's not, it's not even like this is brand new technology. They're using old technology ladies and gentlemen to survey their land so <laughs> this is just crazy to me that you're not updating it but my personal view on that but let's continue that entitled that entailed counting all natural occurring land areas with a circumference of at least 100 meters 330 feet so that's them clarifying that they don't count anything less uh, than 330 feet if they wanted to compare it to any landmass. So, I mean, even if it's some landmass that you're able to freaking bank off of, come on, I would still calculate that into my uh, numbers. But hey, the new number does not in include any artificial reclaimed land. I repeat, artificial reclaimed land. That's weird. <laughs> artificial land but to continue the islands surrounding Japan have been the heart of several territory disputes Japan lays claim to the Russian held southern Kuril Island which Tokyo calls the northern territories a dispute that dates to the end of the World War II when Soviet troops seized them from the Japan Japan also says that as historical claim to the uninhabited Senkaku Island in the East Chinese Sea which is currently administered, but China has repeatedly challenged that claim. I, I bet they have. <laughs> Meanwhile, Japan and South Korea remain locked in more than a 70-year dispute over the sovereignty of a group of islets known as the Dukuru by Seoul and Takishimiya by Tokyo in the Sea of the Japan, which Korea calls the East, the East Sea. Senior Jokota country reporting, so, Wow, ladies and gentlemen, that's just crazy. And all of it, just for them to just find 7,000 islands. Yes, maybe less than 330, but still, nonetheless, a plan of land that they are able to go on and to look at. So my question is, what could be on these islands? You know what I mean? What could travel out here? Could there be different species that we haven't even encountered and if you see one of my last videos a while back they actually found a large art a large landmass a large hole in china where they found different species and i'll be showing you that 
uh, link right here so you can look into that video. But nonetheless, they found different species and they couldn't even comprehend what was down here that they said different biomes and everything. So this is just really interesting that even to this day, 2023, ladies and gentlemen, we're still finding land masses out there like this world is bigger than we're giving it to be. And what's really interesting, because what reminds me of another explorer that I will be doing a video on, because this person is really, really important. And <laughs> the hidden Masonic ties that this person has, but nonetheless, a great explorer that actually said that we, that he found more resources like coal and other stuff, which I don't want to give too much because I'll be making a video about it. But if you don't know about General Admiral Byrd, which I'll be showing you here, Richard E. Elvin Byrd Jr., October 25th, 1888 through March 11, 1957, was an American naval officer and explorer. He was a reception of the Navy Cross, the second highest honor for valor given by the United States. So I can see this is a high profiling person, ladies and gentlemen, and was a pioneering American aviator, polar explorer, and organizer of the polar logistics. Aircraft flights in which he served as a navigator and the expedition leader across the Atlantic Ocean, a segment of the Arctic Ocean, and a segment to the Antarctic Plateau. And this is, and pay attention here because this is why I bring so much high attention to this guy. Bird said that his expeditions had been the first to reach both the North Pole and the South Pole by air. His belief that he reached the North Pole is disputed. He's also known for discovering Mount Sidley, the largest dormant volcano in, Ar in Antarctica. So now, just giving you a brief description of Richie D. Bird, you can see that this man right here was one of the first to touch the North Pole and the South Pole. And if you do your research into him, he actually said some interesting things about Antarctica and what he found there. So I will be making a video because I just don't want to give it all out like that. I do all this work for you guys and I want to deliver, but anywho, all I said, just be ready for that video because that video will be coming up next because there's a lot of things about this person too and um, his associates, let's say, that helped him out so he can get all this money so he can actually go and do all this exploration but anywho what did you guys think about japan finding over about seven thousand new islands that they didn't couldn't even account for and about richard e bird because i'm giving you all the hint right now <laughs> i'm giving you guys the keys right now man you i'm letting you beat me to it because when you do the research you're just gonna be like oh, what this guy yeah this guy but anywho i just want to bring this to you guys attention remember this world is bigger than we really know <laughs> there's so much out there that we don't even know but anywho thank you for taking the time to watch this video i want to make a little short video to talk about this and to present that i'll be making a video about richard e bird one of the first explorers to touch antarctica so anywho thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.